There are so many compound chocolates out there, it's sometimes kind of difficult, not to mention expensive, to find the right one for you. Now, I've always been curious about these more kind of higher end brands of chocolate. So I have Cacao Berry down here and Calabao right here, both of which make a type of white compound chocolate. So in today's video, I thought that we put these two up to the task of some silicone work, see how they perform, see how they taste, and basically just see if they're worth it for your chocolate project. So before we jump into the testing, I thought we'd just briefly go over what a compound chocolate is because I do get that question a lot. It's kind of a misnomer. It's not really considered real chocolate because real chocolate has to have two ingredients in the label. Some sort of cocoa solids, sometimes listed as cocoa liqueur, and it also has to have cocoa butter. Compound chocolate sometimes goes by the name candy wafers, candy coating, compound chocolate, non-tempering chocolate. So why would you use compound chocolate over real chocolate? I think there are two main reasons. The first one is gonna be the fact that you don't have to temper it, so ease of use. So tempering is a method by which you take chocolate, you raise the temperature, then lower the temperature, then raise it again to build cocoa butter crystals in your finished chocolate product, which gives you a shine and a snap. If you improperly temper your chocolate, it'll be kind of soft and gooey and ugly. Compound chocolate doesn't contain cocoa butter, so we don't have to do any of that. We just put it in a microwave or maybe on top of a double broiler, melt it completely, then use it, then just wait for it to set up. It's very, very straightforward. The second reason is the price. 99% of compound chocolates are less expensive than real chocolate. And if you find a brand that you really like the taste of, then I mean, it kind of checks off all the boxes for me, makes it really easy to work with, tastes really good and performs really well. Okay, the first compound chocolate that we're gonna test out is the Calabao Classic Coating that comes in a 10 pound tub like this. And the first question I had is, why does it come in a huge tub and not a bag like my Merkins in Candy Melts? Well, the answer is, is that it comes in one huge chunk like this. Now remember, compound chocolate doesn't need to be tempered and can be remelted over and over again with no negative effects. So my assumption is that these 10 pound tubs are made for restaurants and bakeries to melt all at one time, use in large quantities, and then if they have some left over, they just let it set in the container and then remelt it again. Now, because I'm a home baker, I don't ever plan on using that much melted chocolate at once, at least anytime soon. So the only thing I could think of was to just take a butter knife and just start hacking at the chocolate until I got some nice pieces to melt down. And I'm afraid I don't have anything more glamorous or kind of technically advanced other than just to offer the fact that the butter knife worked really well for me because it didn't have a sharp end and just allowed me to kind of pry off these chunks of chocolate. I then melted this in the microwave using 30 second intervals and it did take less time than Merkin's. So this is about nine ounces of chocolate and to melt it to completion only took about 50 seconds, whereas Merkin's typically takes one minute and 20 seconds. It is helpful to note that it has a much thinner consistency when it's completely melted than Merkin's. I went ahead and added Color Mills Tiffany to color the chocolate a light blue. All the directions on the tub exactly, which stated you melt the chocolate to 120 degrees Fahrenheit, then bring it down to 87 to 89 degrees before using. So I have my mini geometric dome here. I'm going to create a chocolate shell and then fill it with some Nutella crispy treat filling. So I filled each of the cavity about halfway full with this melted chocolate, rotated the mold just a little bit to spread the chocolate around and use a paintbrush to bring the chocolate all the way up to the edge. And at this point, I typically just invert the mold to dump out all of the excess chocolate chocolate, which should leave us with a nice thin first layer. However, because I waited until the chocolate was about 87 degrees before I started the coating process, it was almost already set by the time I dumped out this excess chocolate and it had a really uneven first layer that was really difficult to correct. Following the process on the tub probably won't work for using the shelling method with these silicone molds. It'll probably work for dipping strawberries and cookies like that where you only have to do one coat and you can do it very quickly. Now, because of this, I just ended up starting all over and not waiting until the chocolate cooled down before creating that first coat. With the chocolate in this way, it allowed me to fill all the cavities, use a paintbrush to bring the chocolate up the sides, dump out the excess, and then place the mold in the fridge for about five minutes to firm up. Once that was all firmed up, I pulled it from the fridge and then used a little bit more melted chocolate to paint a second coat of chocolate along the bottom and sides. Once the second coat was nice and firm, I filled all the cavities with Nutella Rice Krispie filling, which if you wanna learn how to make this, I will link to another video in the corner of this one, as well as the description box below. To close off the treats, I just added a little bit more 
chocolate and then let it settle and dry completely before removing. As far as the texture of the finished chocolate, it was very firm. You were able to remove it beautifully from silicone molds. It has a very similar finish and kind of hardness to Merkin's compound chocolate. As far as the taste, I did taste this off camera. It does have a similar flavor profile to Merkin's white chocolate, meaning the sweetness and the type of vanilla kind of flavor that they use is very similar. I wouldn't call it artificial, but it does have a slight aftertaste. It is still very good and kind of tastes like maybe a lower end type of melted vanilla ice cream that you can buy at the grocery store. Next, let's test Cacao Berry's compound coating chocolate in ivory, which also comes in a 10 pound tub. So identical to the Calabout, we're gonna have to take a butter knife and break off some large chunks to melt. But the main difference here is that this Cacao Berry is a softer chocolate product, meaning it's gonna give us a softer finish on whatever we use it on. So hacking at the Calabout was kind of like hacking at a very hard piece of maybe Parmesan cheese, whereas this one is definitely coming apart like a very firm cheddar. Melting nine ounces of this took about one minute using 30 second intervals and it took on Color Mill's emerald color very well. For this set of experiments, I used my gemstone mold, which I'm gonna coat with chocolate and fill with Oreo truffle filling. Now this compound chocolate didn't have any instructions on the label, so I just melted it and used it right away. I filled each of the cavities halfway full of that emerald colored compound chocolate and then used a paintbrush to bring it up to the sides. When everything was nicely coated, I inverted the mold to dump out all of the excess and something completely different happened than what I've ever experienced before. I started to freak out again because the chocolate was starting to set and just like the Calvo, I thought that I would have to start over. As I was rushing to fix this first layer because I always do two coats of chocolate, I've never figured out a way around it because you really need that stability to remove these pieces from the mold, I realized that the chocolate was in a semi-set state. Not only that, it remained in the semi-set state for a really long time, at least long enough for me to combine the first and second layers in one application. So theoretically, you could be saving yourself a lot of time and effort by using this chocolate, doing that first coat and kind of coating the surface, letting it set just a little bit, and then using your paintbrush or a small spoon to thicken the layer. And the texture is very much like, I would say, a soft clay. It's very malleable. So it allows you to create this really thick coat only in one application. Then I let it set completely in the fridge before stuffing each of the cavities with some Oreo truffle filling. I then remelted the chocolate and then poured the remainder on the backs to close them off. And again, I thought I was running into the same issue by having the chocolate set before I had allowed everything to settle and make it look all neat. But once the chocolate had reached that semi kind of solid state, all you have to do is take a spatula and the chocolate almost turns into this kind of buttercream frosting like consistency so you can smooth out the backs and make them actually look pretty decent. As for removing them, I did let them set up in the fridge for about 10 minutes and they popped out beautifully. The finish was really nice and they came out really easily. As for the taste of this chocolate, and I have tasted quite a bit of white compound chocolates, my husband says that I use the word favorite a lot. I don't know if that's true. But in any case, I do think that this is my favorite white compound chocolate. I do really mean it this time. It has no aftertaste. It doesn't have any perceivable artificiality, any artificial vanilla flavor to it. And it has a really great texture and mouthfeel. So what is the verdict on these chocolates? I have my handy dandy cost breakdown for you guys. Okay, the Calabao here, um, product plus shipping, comes out to 46.63 and that's 29 cents per ounce. The cacao berry, cacao berry right here um, was $70 per tub. So it's almost, you know, twice as, well, no, three times as expensive as the Calabao. And that comes out to plus shipping uh, 50 cents per ounce. So it's double the price. Um, just to give you a frame of reference, when I buy Merkins, it's about 24 cents an ounce. And if you buy a Ghirardelli at Target in those tiny little bags, it's about 49 cents an ounce. If you buy it online at the Ghirardelli store, it's 31 cents an ounce. Um, so would I buy these again? Calabao? I would not. Um, it's the same price as Merkins. I mean, we're talking about four cents, five cents of a difference. Um, Merkins is just 
it tastes almost the same to me. It was really annoying for me if I'm gonna get that same flavor profile to have to kind of like hack at a big piece of chocolate to get all those little you know chunks out. Um, and the product was thinner, so I found it a little bit more difficult to work with with a double coating. Um, so no, I would not buy Calabao again based on performance or price. Would I buy Cacao Berry again? Absolutely. The stuff tastes insane. The texture is great. The mouthfeel um, is very smooth. There's no aftertaste. It has a very milky, pleasant flavor. And if you remember how I finished off the backs of these um, green um, treats here, I was able to kind of like treat it like frosting at some point and, you know, fix the back, which I've never been able to do. And um, I was, I did a single thick coat, which could save you a considerable amount of time if you're making lots of these. Granted, it's, it's more expensive than the Merkins, but if you're looking for a higher end chocolate compound product, I think cacao berry is definitely the way to go. And then you can, I mean, if you're selling this stuff, you could definitely say that you're using like a high end French chocolate. And it definitely has like a salt. Before I break open my chocolate, can I show you the culprit behind all that singing? She's right there counting all my mangoes, just so you know. <laughs> okay, let's turn this down now. Oh, how come it's not 